I hope I'm not reflecting in Cousin It's sunglasses. Hi, everyone. Look, I feel like the baboon that sits up behind the other baboon and I'm um, picking out fleas. <laughs> Maxillaria variabilis, Cousin It is shedding spent blooms and they don't shed fast enough for my liking because he is so tightly grown in here. Everything is so clustered and bunched up that I go and I pretty much pick out the blooms, even some failing leaves, only if they come off easily. Thank you so much for joining me here now with Cousin It. While I preen away like the baboons I watched back in the day, I do this on the daily. This is an episode of Blooms for You. He's got plenty of blooms to come, but still, he might as well look a little bit more presentable while on camera. This orchid is a joy. Not only is he super, super large, but he can survive everything that's being thrown at him as he lives out here on my patio dealing with what the elements provide. He blooms for all of you watching this video on the day that it airs, or let's just say in a couple of months. If you stumble across it and think, what is going on here? Well, this episode of Blooms For You is where I check out all the list of people that I can identify via comments in the comment section, via subscribers, who make their subscription publicly known. And then your name goes on a list and bit by bit, I can get down to the names and thank each and every one of you personally. Blooms For You has been around on my channel since I started it back in 2020. And it will continue to be a feature because there's no other way apart from in the comments to say thank you. But it is so much nicer that when an orchid blooms out and your name comes up, I can actually put a name to a bloom and thank you personally. So we've had some challenging times in the past weeks, oh, months, <laughs> but I have managed to get some orchids to bloom. Why don't we, if you would be so inclined to join me and have a look-see whose name came up next and which blooms have opened. Look what is happening here. <laughs> Dendrobium nobili variety Cooksonianum is in bloom. And there's only one person that I can think of that I really want to dedicate this first cluster on my patio of Cooksonianum blooms. And that is Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents who gifted me this orchid. She arrived on my patio September of 2021 and obviously has been cultivated to such a great degree that I get to enjoy her blooms. So Fernanda, thank you very, very much for this orchid. Now that we have a little bit of sun coming out, let me just reduce the color. There you go. That is what she looks like in real life, not including the reflection from my white facade. Fernanda, thank you so much. She is gorgeous. And I've taken some still shots. I've gotten in a little bit closer. She is fuzzy, furry, and dainty looking the closer you get into this bloom i love it and she is fragrant i don't know if my memory bank lost that information somewhere that this orchid is actually fragrant but i was surprised when i did dare to stick my nose in there and go are you fragrant and woo there was that floral aroma and it is divine now at first because you think of the color i think my brain is playing tricks on me and I'm thinking, yep, there's a hint of raspberry because, you know, an osmum, et cetera. It's like the brain is associating that the two look the same. So no, I tried again. It's not raspberry, at least not to my nose. What I'm getting is that gorgeous fragrance that you get when you walk into a flower shop and you're in the rose section area. There's so many heady fragrances going around a little bit of those commercial big lilies that also have a very strong fragrance. It is extremely pleasant, not very, very strong. You have to get close. That is under the conditions I currently find myself in, which is, you know, on and off cloudy, on and off rain. So I don't know if her fragrance gets more intense than that, but it doesn't matter. I love going to her and I love sticking my nose in the blooms. They are gorgeous. There is so much detail on these blooms. Fernanda Nacimento, orchids and succulents. I cannot thank you enough for this orchid, but also for your support on my channel. Very, very much appreciated. I say it, I mean it.
All right, they're not quite open yet, but I am really fighting elements here. So what I'm going to do is dedicate these blooms of my Tolumnia brown spots to Welliano and Ned Flynn, even though they are not open just yet. But we have some really, really bad weather coming up, another five to six days. And these little blooms are trying to fight to open up while they are being brought in and out on the daily. And well, Yano and Ned Flynn, you see, I've already lost a few buds here, but blast from the constant moving in and out. So I am going to take advantage right now because we can actually appreciate how cute these blooms are. My goodness, this is the most vibrant I've ever had my brown spots. Maybe the bad weather is doing them a favor, even though not me, but she is huge. These blooms are about as big as my pomegranate blooms, which are the biggest Tolumnia blooms that I have. And I'm very, very grateful that the end of the spike, in fact, bloomed out because when I saw all this bud blast happening here, yeah, I was like, okay, I've got one bloom to enjoy all by myself. And then when these buds started to hold on and then bloom out, I'm like, no, I've got to share them. I've got to share them. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So my Tolumnium brown spots. Well, Yano, Ned Flynn, these blooms are for you to say thank you to you very, very much for your support on my channel. I really hope that you are a fan of Tolumnias. I hope to also be able to show them at a later stage if they will open up all the way. Time will tell. Meanwhile, they bloom for you. Thank you so much for being here. We made it. Okay, let me explain. Arengus fastuosa. And first of all, before I explain, Paige Davis and Tyler Jackson, World of Plant Keeping. My Arengus fastuosa has four blooms, two on each spike, and these blooms are for the two of you. So now let me explain. Yes, they are a little bit quetched. You would think they're not exactly open. Well, my setup is not exactly the perfect setup at this point in time for the ideal presentation of these gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. If she were on a mount, everything would be hanging beautifully. The blooms would have space to open up properly. For the time being, I am forfeiting beautiful display of Arangus fastuosa blooms with the gorgeous long spurs just to maintain the orchid healthy in my super dry climate. I know that I sound greedy but I'm already looking forward to next year's blooming because by that time she will have spikes that are a little bit higher and we may start to be able to appreciate the proper presentation of fastuosa blooms but that is not to take away from their beauty and their pristineness and for that reason I am still going to dedicate them to you Paige Davis and Tyler Jackson world of plant keeping because I love them <laughs> and they are worthy of the two of you Paige maybe by now I have the answer but at the time of filming this clip I am super curious to know if Lelia loved her presence that's all I want to ask. I am so grateful that you gave me some great feedback. That makes me very happy. Now, it's just a question of knowing if Lelia likes it as well. Isn't that amazing? Anybody that's listening, there's a lady out there in the world called Lelia. Perfect, I love it. And Tyler Jackson, World of Plant Keeping. I hope that you are doing well as well, young man, and that soon we shall be seeing some videos on your channel know that the two of you are very much appreciated and I do sincerely hope you are okay with a little bit of a kvetched Arangus fastuosa blooming as a thank you for your support. Can you believe it that I have had Arangus fastuosa fragrant during the day even though they are only fragrant at night and I can tell you how that happened. It's because I have had next to no light for a long long period of time it was so dark in my growth space, this orchid thought it was nighttime. So I would wander around my home and I could smell Orangus fastuosa at lunchtime, even early afternoon. You get it, all the time, because the orchid couldn't tell the difference. And that gorgeous lily of the valley combination with jasmine fragrance, it was uplifting, it lifted my spirits, during the dark and gloomy days. We have a few more gloomy days coming up, so maybe she will repeat that phenomenon for me. 
That's the only positive thing I can think of from these past weeks is that my fastuosa, when she bloomed out, she was fragrant during daytime. <laughs> right, anyway, Paige Davis, thank you so much for your support. Tyler Jackson, World of Plant Keeping, you too, young man. Thank you for your support. Back in the blooming business is my Tulumnia pomegranate, and I have two branches. We're looking at one of them right now. These two branches are blooming for Angel Bass and Amy Redding. I'm gonna turn her around carefully because I don't want to be touching any new roots that are growing. Here's the second branch, just opening up. Awesome, still looking magnificent, even though this is a branching spike that has bloomed prior. At least the next branch up is not necessarily any smaller. She is amazing. She's also super vigorous now without me getting too carried away because this orchid is very top heavy and she's still in her basket, but you can see two more new growths already developing. Woohoo! I am really looking forward to the transitioning process of this orchid because she is going to go into a self-watering setup, but we still have to wait because my temperatures are not yet playing ball. Still, two branches. She seems to be happy in her little basket and I suppose I could leave her like that indefinitely. It's just me, myself and I. We are eager to get her into a self-watering setup. But for the time being, it's wonderful to be able to enjoy another flush of blooms from this gorgeous orchid. and to be able to dedicate them to Angel Bass or Angel Bass, not really sure, and Amy Redding. Thank you both of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. My Tulumia pomegranate, she blooms for you. What do you think? <laughs> doesn't this look somewhat alien, but doesn't it look cute? This is Ascocentra ampuyatheum. Mine is named Pink Dreamer for obvious reasons. And these are two spikes of teeny tiny blooms all clustered together. Super pink. <laughs> I love them. Anyway, let me get to who these are blooming for. Thank you to Thianti Kool, Tracy Fu, Peter Kawahi, Julia Keleti. My Ascocentrum ampuyathea, Pink Dreamer, she blooms for you. Now, I am also very surprised to see these blooms because clearly I've had some very controversial conditions in my grow space over the winter. And surprise, she is actually blooming on time. She normally already lives outside this time of year, but the temperatures have been so cold that she is still indoors at the point of filming this, which is the first week of April. That makes no sense to me and my senses at all but it appears that she could care less. She has had enough light and she's going to bloom anyway. So it is really bizarre to have her indoors and not walk outside to see her blooming. There is absolutely no complaint in my voice. Once again, I was not expecting this orchid to bloom this season. I'm very grateful that she did because I really want to make sure that Thianti Kool, Tracy Fu, Peter Kawahi and Julia Kaletti know that I see you. I thank you, I appreciate you, and my Ascocentrum Ampuyatheum Pink Dreamer, she blooms for you. There's also no regret in my voice because this year, because of the fact that it is so much cooler than it was last year when she was outside already, I have no aphids at all that are competing when it comes to the enjoyment of my blooms. I've got them to myself. Now I've shared them with the Anticool, Tracy Fu, Peter Kawahi, and Julia Kaletti, but we are not sharing them with any aphids. I don't have to get in there with my paintbrush. <laughs> maturing beautifully. I'm very, very pleased with the progress of this orchid. If she wasn't with at least one root <laughs> in the media, I would really struggle being able to keep her happy in my very dry climate. But here she is, little pom-pom of pink blooms that has merged into one pom-pom, but is in actual fact two spikes. Oh, love her. Thank you so much. The Anticool, Tracy Fu, Peter Kawahi, and Julia Kaletti for your support here on my channel.
we have ourselves a very, very shy orchid, but she has absolutely no reason to be shy. I have two spikes on my Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga for Aida Acevedo, Ronald Lamstra, Ajita Reddy, and David Tijon. So that's six blooms. And yes, I could wait for the other spikes to open, but my weather is so, so volatile. I am not going to risk it. I do not know whether it's going to rain, whether the wind will blow everything over, whether it's going to be sunny or what is going on. Maybe another load of Sahara sand coming onto the patio. So I'm going to just take it from here and dedicate these two spikes that because of the nature of the orchid, just bend down. They're fine. They're not wilted. But these go to Aida Acevedo, Ronald Lanstra, Ajita Reddy, David Tijon to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I want you to know that your names have come up and these bloom for you. Now they're not fragrant. I'm going to be adding some images, of course, because it's so silly to always have to lift them up. The whole detail of these blooms is remarkable. The detail, meanwhile, on the back with the sepals and the spotting, it is gorgeous. It really is. But the main attraction is right in here. So this orchid is actually on the top shelf of my indoor grow space where I can look up at the blooms instead of always having to touch them. You can see that a bud has already blasted over here. I'm really trying to protect the other spikes. We shall see what happens. But for now, the emphasis and the focus is on saying thank you to Aida Acevedo, Ronald Lanstra, Ajita Reddy and David T. Hon for your support on my channel. Know that you are very, very much appreciated and I hope that you're doing well in your part of the world. Anyone for a Phalaenopsis dedication? You may have noticed that on my channel, I do not dedicate any Phalaenopsis except for summer bloomers species, but definitely not complex hybrids because I am never sure who really, really is a fan of a Phalaenopsis complex hybrid. And I don't want to offend anybody who consider them common peasant or not special. But when it comes to Phalaenopsis schilleriana, that is a very popular and in demand species Phalaenopsis. I kind of feel safe to be able to dedicate these. So I'm going to give this a go and say thank you to Russ Bully, Jerome Lin, Jan Vries, Jose Josef, Stacy Soldato. Jose Josef, you have to tell me if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, please. I would say Jose, it could be Jose Joseph. You let me know in the comments. I hope that you are into Phalaenopsis Schilleriana, Jose, as well as Russ Bully, Jerome Lin, Jan Vries, and Stacy Soldato. You can see that her fragrance has already attracted a bee. Who knows? We might get a seed out of this one. <laughs> At least I witnessed it and I could say that it would be a direct self-cross. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Her fragrance. She smells like a wonderful bouquet of roses. She has the fragrance that you get when you walk into the perimeters of a rose garden. You get this general, beautiful aroma of roses in the air and then you can go and identify individual roses as you walk along the paths but that rose fragrance is so so elegant and it is pretty pretty strong if there is warmth in the air you don't need sunlight to appreciate that rose fragrance but it needs to be warmer than I currently have. I only ever so often get a little bit of a waft of it when my grow space where this orchid lives warms up just enough for this orchid to send out her fragrance. Behind the spike is another leaf forming, has as yet to mature, but this spike is more generous than it was last year. There is a branch that is blooming with four blooms. So once again, Russ Bully, Jerome Lynn, Jan Vries, Jose Joseph, Stacy Soldato. My Phalaenopsis Schilleriana blooms for you to say thank you to all of you for your support here on my channel. You are all so much appreciated. And I hope that you do like Phalaenopsis Schilleriana blooms because she is a special Phalaenopsis. She is not what one would consider the peasant orchid. Definitely not. Thank you all very, very much for your support. I hope that all of you in the different parts of the world are doing well.
I wasn't going to do this dedication this year because my dendrobium berry odor really took a beating. She doesn't look as representative as she did last year, not just because of the divisions, but I should have been more mindful to pull her out of the elements and protect her a little bit more as she was forming the buds. But then I thought, you know, let's have a look and see what she looks like through the viewfinder. Maybe we can pick out the beauty of her, even though I have had to cut off a lot of blooms. I've already taken off a lot of spikes. You can see how some blooms are fading fast up here. And my grooming was this morning, so yeah. Still, I want to do this dedication because I think it is important that if I were to have a tradition <laughs> for a two-year-old channel, um, there's no real tradition <laughs> yet, but let's just call it a tradition. I dedicate my dendrobium berry odor bloom spikes, no matter that this year there aren't as many blooms to go around as there were last year. But when in bloom, this berry odor, she blooms as a thank you to all the Care Collab channels that are participating in this Care Collab initiative that started in December of 2020. We have ourselves some new channels already in 2022. The Care Collab initiative is still going strong. And as more channels join, more options are out there for blooms and orchids and blooms and more variety when it comes to environments and how everybody cares for the different orchids based on where they live. Not only that, what is an orchid doing when in a different hemisphere? One is blooming in the north, the other one is in winter rest in the southern hemisphere. I find it all very, very interesting and that is why, even though my berry odor isn't as spectacular as last year, I do not have enough channels for all the blooms that are on this berry odor, so let's keep that in mind. There are more blooms on this berry odor than I have channels, so there's that. <laughs> enough blooms to go around and enough blooms to add on to any other channels that see this video that have never heard of the care collabs before and that would like to join in let me know in the comments and we shall be in touch get the ball rolling and get the information sent out to you etc etc consider yourself welcome to the care collab crew that has been scrolling across the screen hopefully since I've been talking because it is quite a long list. So my dendrobium berry odor, scruffy looking or not, <laughs> she blooms as a thank you to all the Care Collab channels for your participation in this initiative. You're very much appreciated. Thank you. This is as close as I'm going to put the viewfinder in your face. Cousin, it enough. I know I always show you from a distance. That's because I want everybody to see how big and lush and beautiful you are. Now I have you in a close up. Stop. If I get any closer, everything will be out of focus and stop with the moaning. While you're in bloom, you will always be featured. Take advantage of it, appreciate it, and stop the complaining. And those are the kind of conversations I have with Cousin It when I come on the patio. At least that's what I tell myself unless I'm hearing voices in my head now. <laughs> that latter option could be the case because I'm going a little bit gaga with the weather. Anyway, I don't want to take up much more of your time. Conversations with Cousin It can continue after I've signed off. So thank you very very much for watching i appreciate your support i wish you a beautiful day and as per usual though most importantly please stay safe take care bye